playing games casually with our friends to pass the time and build memories is one of the many great reasons to game. But if you've never played your favorite games in a competitive atmosphere, you have no idea what you're missing. So what exactly are you missing? Let's talk about the benefits of competitive gaming today on Draw 5 Move 5. Hey everyone, and welcome to the table. My name is Gabe, and this is Draw 5 Move 5, a show where we draw connections between the mechanics behind our favorite games. I recently had the privilege to attend the 2019 Yu-Gi-Oh! North American World Championship Qualifier, or NAWCQ. For those who are unaware, this is the event where players from all across North America who have earned their invite by doing well at a regional qualifier, OTS day, or YCS event, compete to earn the honor of dueling in the World Championship, taking place in Germany this year. Now, I'm going to be real with you guys, I did not do very well, but this was my first NAWCQ and I had an amazing time. I'm seriously grateful that I had the chance to attend and participate in this event, but moreover, I'm glad that I have a platform where I can share this experience with everyone. By telling this story and talking about my takeaways from the event, I want to show you all the benefits of competitive play and attending events like this for your favorite games, and encourage you to try one of these events, whether it be something as big as the NAWCQ or as small as going to a local tournament. There's so much to be gained that not trying it is doing yourself a disservice. My biggest learning experience from attending the event was that I wasn't as prepared as I should have been. I needed to practice against the top decks, namely for when I lose the die roll at the start of the match and am likely to be forced to go second. Although going second against some of the top decks would have been a complete lost cause for my deck, my build didn't have enough main deck resources to beat Danger Thunder or Orcist going second, Sky Striker and Salamangrate were a different matter. I had a fair chance in those matchups going second, but not practicing this cost me round one when I faced a Salamangrate player and lost a die roll, something that happened quite frequently this tournament as I only won one die roll the entire event. But still, I had a great time playing. Everyone I was playing against was my equal or better. They all had tremendous skill and I really needed to think through everything if I wanted to succeed. I learned from my opponents and asked them for advice on what I could do better after each match. We talked about my misplays and possible deck changes that could have helped me avoid some of the problems I experienced. Being able to challenge yourself in this way is a benefit of competitive gaming. Players at tournaments are there for the same thing, to challenge themselves and achieve victory. We put our all into every game we play because we expect the same of our opponents. This is a difference from casual play, where we often hang out with the same group of friends and just play for fun. While those types of games are always enjoyable, there comes a point where you reach your limit. If there's no competitive aspect, no drive to improve, or friends who can truly give you a challenge, then you can start to stagnate. When I was in high school and first getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh!, I had the same issue. I teched out my deck to beat my friends and still tended to lose because I wasn't learning the right skills from playing them. None of us were going to tournaments so it was kind of expected that it happened. When we finally started going to a local store once a month, I get creamed constantly. I started getting frustrated that I wasn't doing well. All of that came from not consistently challenging myself with the players there. When I came to college and started attending locals more frequently, and playing and talking with the players who did the same more often outside of the tournaments, my game started improving. You can see how far that got me, giving me the opportunity to attend the NAWCQ this year. The challenge we put ourselves to by competing in our favorite games expands our minds by teaching further strategy and honing skills we've never thought to use. We learn humility and good sportsmanship as well through this challenge, having to accept both winning and losing gracefully as we start from the bottom and climb our way up to more and more victories. Of course, just because you're not playing with your casual friends doesn't mean you'll be alone in playing against complete strangers. Through my years of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and especially in college, I've made a ton of awesome friends by going to my local scene and competing in tournaments. I drove to the NAWCQ with two of them and we shared an Airbnb with two more for this weekend. We spent late nights before and after long tournament days testing and preparing for the event, learning more about our own decks and the decks we could expect to see in the main and side events. I know I can talk to them and expect to up my game by dueling them. Even more than that though, they're friends who care about my well-being and that I can expect to be honest with me. 
On the drive home, my friend Kevin told me that he and my buddy Kesavon had expected me to do very well, and likely make day two. He told me my list was really well built and they were impressed with the power of what I was piloting. That realism, the fact that they believed in my ability so much and had seen how much I've grown as a duelist, a deck builder, and a person, made it all the more clear to me that I need to practice more if I'm ever going to do really well, and not just stay up on what's happening in the meta. Understanding is different from experience. Spending days in hotels and motels and Airbnbs, supporting each other, talking strategies late into the night, and going out for food as a team forges friendships that are going to last for years to come. We cannot see each other for years, then travel to an event to meet up with them, and it's like we never were apart. These tournaments, this competitive play, gives us reasons to come back together. It's another fantastic benefit of competitive gaming. And speaking of traveling to an event, that's another benefit. Kevin, Cam, and I drove to the NAWCQ in Pittsburgh from our area. All told, the round trip was 16 hours and over 800 miles. We stayed in a really nice Airbnb with Case Vaughn and Parator, cooked breakfast in the mornings, and when we weren't in the convention center or the apartment, we were exploring. The city was beautiful, and I felt a lot more comfortable there than I have walking around in New York City. It was large and honestly really friendly, with some amazing architecture and cool events happening at the same time we were around. There was a street fair in the Market Square on Friday, and a jazz street festival on Saturday. We experienced a variety of delicious food including Mexican, an amazing authentic Chinese restaurant, Turkish pizza, and one of the city's most recommended spots, the Bramante Brothers Sandwich Shop. Normally, I'd never spend the money to travel. I don't have the money to go on frequent trips, nor the time since I'm in school. And there are a lot of people in the same boat. Frugal spenders that won't treat themselves, being too busy with work or school, having a family to watch over. It's hard to go when the only reason is, well, I'd like to go on vacation. Going to competitive events and tournaments gives you a good reason to travel. You're going to a new place to enjoy an event for a game you already love, and while you're there, you can experience the food, architecture, people, and culture that the locale has to offer while not in the main event. Another thing about bigger events is that the main tournament isn't all you'll find in the venue. At the NAWCQ, there were a plethora of side events going on. I participated in a win a mat, which is a smaller tournament with the chance at the end to earn a play mat if you win. Kind of, you know, as the name would imply. Although it was the only side event I played in, there were Attack of the Giant card tournaments where you can win a card that's like three feet tall, it's crazy. Battle City tournaments, Duelist League tournaments, Structure Deck tournaments, signings with the voice actors for Joey Wheeler and Ishizu Ishtar from the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series, events for multiple formats of the game like Duel Links and Speed Duels, and vendors with tons of cards, mats, and figures for purchase. FYE was even there showing off their new collaboration with Konami to create Blue Eyes White Dragon cereal and Berry Blast chocolate bars. Kind of a weird choice, but I mean, seems to be working for them. It's not just Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments with the side events either. Most competitive gaming events with a size of over 100 players start to include side events. This summer, for example, the 2019 EVO Championship Series is taking place in Las Vegas, Nevada. The event is a video game championship for 9 different fighting games including Super Smash Bros, Mortal Kombat, and Street Fighter. In addition to competitions for all of these games, however, the first two days of the event will also feature a sizable amount of panels and locations to bring your own controllers and gaming systems to plug and play with other players not in the main event. Plus, sponsors of the event will be selling merchandise. You can see the parallels here between the NAWCQ's lineup of events. All big tournaments have side events like these in addition to the main event, which can feature a ton of cool people to meet and talk to, as well as places to keep playing if you're no longer in the main event. With all of these side events, and the main event as well, there's some compensation to be had for spending your hard-earned money at competitive events. Of course, I'm referring to prizing. Having earned my invite and pre-registered for the main event of the NAWCQ on Friday, I earned this year's NAWCQ prize mat, a pack of WCQ 2019 sleeves to protect my cards, and just for pre-registration, a six-sided colored die with a symbol related to types of spell and trap cards replacing the one side. I got a red continuous trap die which actually matches my pre-registration die from YCS Niagara Falls last year. The NAWCQ is the only main event that doesn't grant entry packs as a prize as well. Every local tournament I have ever played in gives you at least one pack for entering the tournament, followed by more packs that may be harder to get if you do well. 
This also extends to side events at these bigger tournaments. The win amount I entered, for example, had packs given on entry. I pulled a card from mine that was worth about $60, which I sold off quite quickly to a vendor so I could make some money back to cover some of what I owed for gas, food, and the like. While this kind of luck obviously doesn't happen to everyone, it was still something, along with the mat, dice, and sleeve, that made the experience memorable. That prize support, along with the chance to earn even more, gives a reason to play more than just to drive to succeed and to push ourselves. Now there's a chance we can win something more than a title. All of the side and main events had prizes for winning, as well as prizes for those who make top 64 in the main event. Those with the skill could win mats, deck boxes, tickets to spend at a prize wall, prize cards worth hundreds if not thousands of dollars, gaming systems, trophies, and of course, that all-important invite to worlds. Playing in any tournament, no matter how big or small, will often mean there's more on the line than just pride and status. The chance that these symbols of success and items we can enjoy, no matter how vain it may be, appeals to us on a base level. No matter how much we like to win, we like to win stuff more. Between the challenge of facing skilled players, the possibility of making new friends, the chance to explore new cities, the draw of side events, and the reward of prize support, there's a lot to love about competitive gaming. I think the best part, though, is getting another chance to play our favorite games. We get to experience them in a whole new setting and have a place to go to as often as we want, where we know there will be other people who care about these games as we do. Supporting my official tournament store is something I care quite a lot about, because it provides me a place to play the games I care about so much. Shout out to Millennium Games in Rochester. Supporting these stores, and tournaments in general, shows the companies that run our favorite games that we're engaged and want more from them. It's how we prevent our games from going extinct. For every game that still gets support, there are 15 more that burned out like embers in a fireplace. To support and play our favorite games in the places where the creators can see not only challenges us to be better players, but ensures we can keep playing for years to come. So find your local tournament scene, and try playing your favorite game at a higher level. You may just level up yourself. Thank you so much for watching. You have my humble and eternal gratitude. What did you think of the conversation? What are your favorite aspects of competitive gaming? If you're not a competitive player, did I convince you to give it a go? If not, tell me why. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so let's keep this discussion rolling down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video and you want to hear more from me, hit the like button. I'm putting out new videos every week on games and gaming mechanics, so be sure to subscribe and ding -a that notification bell so you never miss an update. My name is Gabe, this is Draw5Move5, and until next week, go have a good game.